They speak a language all their own. They make music. They work and they play. They express love and power. Like the imprint of light on photosensitive paper, life imprints itself on our hands. The lines on our hands, shaped by endless hours of touching and feeling, tell the story of our lives and make us who we are. Speaking with hands, photographs from the Buell collection, an exhibition at the Guggenheim Museum in New York, tells the tale of the photographer's take on the human hand. The exhibition is the culmination of Henry Buell's passion for the image of the hand. A passion that began when he first saw Alfred Stieglitz's Hands with Thimble, an elegant photograph of the hands of Georgia O'Keeffe. When I first saw the uh, picture, my heart was just uh, went a flutter. It, it, it has some of the most graceful lines in it I'd ever seen. And uh, you just had to think, what was George O'Keefe like? Anybody who could have such beautiful hands, I was wondering, and I said, gee, I wish I had had the opportunity to meet her. So he bought that photograph, and then another, and another, eventually collecting over a thousand photographs, more than 170 of which are on display at the Guggenheim. Buell's collection spans virtually the entire history of photography, from famous hands to his own. It's on the back of the catalog, too. It's a kind of a different kind. It wasn't taken with a camera. It was a, a hand put on a plate, and then it was manipulated in the darkroom. There are over 20 different photographic processes represented in the collection. From the early x-rays of Eugene de Crete to the photograms of Man Ray and Walker Evans to a salt print by Nadar and screen prints by Bruce Nauman. When I first started to study this collection, at first I thought it was some, a somewhat whimsical subject, very personal and connected to Henry. The more I studied it, the more I realized that it's really a significant subject for the history of photography. Jennifer Blessing is the show's curator. With photography, the, the camera allowed the photographer to focus on any aspect, um, any minute detail with equal facility. And so photographers started to really crop images and focus on unusual viewpoints, and the hands were really just a natural subject. From eerie experiments with hypnosis in the 1850s to the secret handshakes of the independent order of Oddfellows to the worn hands of Dorothea Lange's migratory cotton picker and the unsettling pictures of Paul McCarthy. Images of the hand grip the imagination like little else. Everyone knows, of course, that babies put their thumbs in their mouth uh, immediately. What's not so well known is that young children, beginning at the age of six months, spend most of their waking hours actually looking at their own hands as they manipulate objects. Looking at the hand, first of all. Frank Wilson, a neurologist at the Stanford University Medical Center in California, certainly knows about hands. He has written a book about them. He even reads hands. We have an innate predisposition to use our hands, and we develop a very, very powerful visual attraction to not only our own hands, but to the hands of the people around us. We watch each other's hands. We are innate hand watchers. And we, of course, we like to look at photographs of hands as well. There is even the absence of hands, so terrible to behold, as in this photograph by Gilles Paris of a young boy injured in the conflict in Bosnia. Hands can communicate whimsy, anger, resistance, determination, 
There are some people who even believe that sign language preceded spoken language as the most effective and rich linguistic communication system. Speech really came later. Uh, the vocal tract didn't mature until later. We know that. We speak with hands. We shape with hands. We accomplish with hands. And we feel with hands. A universe of possibilities, all within our grasp.